everybody. Welcome to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Monday, February 24th. Last week of the month, hopefully we get some movement here. Um, looks like a lot of the markets are consolidating here at the upper end of the range. So uh, it's definitely an opportunity that we can uh, break higher. But there are continued red flags across the board. I'm just going to point out a few that I pointed out before uh, last week. In the meantime, uh, dismal price action last week. It just, just was horrible. Markets really didn't go anywhere. Uh, on Friday, Dow Jones was down almost 30 points. NASDAQ down about 4. S&P down 3.5. And, and Russell eked out a small game up $2.52. So really, really dismal price action. I thought we would get a little bit more movement on the options expiration Friday, but it was just boring to say the least. And that's what it is, is that, you know, when the markets are, are digesting, looking for some sort of a catalyst for the next move higher, or lower for that matter, uh, you need to be resilient. You need to just step back and just wait. Let the trade set up and let them come to you. Don't be forcing trades. Not worth it. Uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunity, um, as there were so far. For we had some decent moves, uh, and then we just consolidated. So let's just take a step back and uh, take one step at a time. There's continued red flags that uh, tells me that uh, we possibly could be moving uh, lower, uh, and then and. In that scenario, if I uh, if I'm saying that it's red flags, I'd like to I'd like to be really cautious on trading until price tells me that I'm in sync of what my analysis tell me. So if if we start to break out to the upside, well, we're going to just continue to follow the trend. As being trend traders, you want to obviously look for good quality stocks on pullbacks uh, and then look to purchase them. Or if we do revert back to the downside and we have a continued correction. Um, then we would look for weak stocks and we would sell any type of rallies here. Uh, but right now, the markets aren't given either. So we just want to be patient and uh, just take a step back and be ready um, when the market gives that opportunity. All right, so a couple of things I'm just going to show you tonight, this, uh, today, excuse me, not, not really much is going on. Stocks above the 50-day moving average. We're back, back testing this. Um, this uptrend line of series of higher highs, higher lows, we did break down. Now we're back testing it. I, as you can see in this V formation, the um, um, indicator is overboard, as you can see here. So logical spot for a move lower, right? Now let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX here is um, sitting right on the 200-day moving average. Hasn't really gone anywhere in the last uh, the last week, basically. We're up back down again but sitting on the 200 day moving average now if we can get some sort of a push to the upside obviously the VIX would start to break lower again as you can see the Bollinger Bands are starting to come in but need a lot of work now um, I noticed that um, looking at some commodity stocks and uh, we'd like to trade commodities you know, via the ETF um, the uh, gold is on a tear right now gold's up 12 and they see that's another concern of mine uh, you know gold is up S&P is up and bonds are up or basically just moving sideways to slightly up that's that's not that's not a, a to me a good sign if markets are healthy and moving up why is gold and bonds at least uh bonds uh moving their way up and that's not that's not uh something that um bodes well for me anyway but if you look at the crb index and that's something that we'd like to look at um on my analysis this is based on some metals and um, oil stocks and um grains so you can see the CRB index has broken out of a downtrend um, channel all of 2013 and part of 2014. Uh, excuse me, 2012. So this here is telling me that uh, uh, commodity price is moving higher. And that's basically because we have the dollar moving lower here. So, um, you know, we could be setting up for some decent um, commodity trades as well again. So, um, you know, I'm going to be closely watching certain markets here. Uh, especially, of course, gold, um, silver, and oil. Uh, we had some nice trades that we uh, called out. Uh, but again, now you're at extended levels. You want, don't want to be chasing gold, silver, um, and crude is actually just kind of stabilized. So we don't want to be chasing those type of, uh, of stock. You want to make sure, let it come in, because these commodity stocks do come in, and they come in fierce. Okay, so anyway, let's go right into the index. Very quiet. going to be a quick video today, but I want to show you. This is the concern I have. We have... Gold breaking out. We have um, S and P running higher as well, and again up. Uh, I believe it was the f out of 14 days of trading, we we're up uh, 12 out of the 14 days, which is really ludicrous. Right back up again, and um, and then we have bonds stabilizing here, the TLT. So this is a big, major red flag. If anything, aside from all indicators, this is a red flag for me. And uh, S and P 500 again 
wanted to show you the weekly chart here, starting the week off. Um, the the longer-term picture looks fantastic. I would just love to see this market correct 10%, 12% um, go before going into um, you know the summer months. Um, anyway, here's the spiders. As you can see, uh, we're back at the upper end of the range. Really haven't gone anywhere. We started with, um, with a, um, a real small candle doji and then we had an outside day we had it back an inside day and we've been literally just chopping around here which tells me there's a bigger move to come and unfortunately it doesn't tell you where um, or when it's going to come so we just have to be patient and kind of wait for it as you can see here we're just sitting on the top of this upper end of the range there's nothing really wrong with it um, to be quite honest uh, when the markets hold the upper end of the range usually it begins to break out again but when you do see gold and bonds moving higher as well as equities, it's just a little bit of a concern to me. Now, that just could be alleviated and we just break higher. Eventually, if we do break out, then I would suspect bonds would, um, would start to sell off as, as uh, market participants sell their bonds and put money into work in equities. And then we move much higher, right? That's the scenario. And that's something that I'm going to be patient waiting. I'm not going to call it because I have no reason to call. I just look at what the technical analysis is telling me. Okay. Now here's the IYT, the transports did wake up on Friday, which was a decent, uh, decent sign. But again, guys, you know, it's not our. This is our leader. Our leader should be leading, and it's not. And that's another sign. It's another red flag. When you have the S and P and the Dow moving higher, uh, aside from um, the transports, that, that's something that's uh, uh, telling me something else. And look at uh, IWM. Same thing. I mean, now it did eke out a gain on Friday, but still at the upper end of the range, can't even get in. This, is, this broke down from a bearish rising wedge, which is on a sell signal, technically. Um, so if we break below this little cluster here, if we take out the low of, you know, I would even call it the 113.30, which is the 50-day moving average. If we take out 113.30 on a closing basis, I would look for lower prices in the IWM, which would probably um, start some sort of a sell-off in, um, in the markets as well, because it is one of our leaders. Q's actually made all-time highs last week. Uh, and now it took a little bit of a breather on Friday. But again, you can see we're at the upper end of the range. We literally are vertical um, trading up. I think we're down only two, two trading sessions out of 14 in the queues, um, as well as the rest of the markets. But you can see here, uh, good sign, but that's also helped out by Apple and Tesla and a couple of key components in the uh, queues. Take a look at the diamonds here. Weak, 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 all you can say. Uh, just hovering above the 50-day moving average. If this starts to break lower, then you're going to have some continued weakness again. So again, the, in the, the indices that we follow are mixed. Uh, the leaders are not leading, and then you have gold and bonds moving higher, as, as well as S&P. That tells me, hey, let me back off a little bit of the trading until it gets really easy again, and that's what you need to do. Uh, uh, go to GLD. GLD <clears throat> this morning will break out because um, uh, we have Gold actually making new highs as we speak, up $13.30 in the pre-market session. So GLD is now trading above this. So this is, uh, you know, if you're a gold trader and you like to trade gold, this is uh, uh, fantastic. But again, a bit stretched from this breakout of this downtrend line. Let it come back in maybe to the 20, even back down to the 8, somewhere around this area. Um, if you want to look to try to get long. I have no trade in it at the moment. Um, I like to see lower prices before <laughs> I don't like to chase. Uh, XOP, oil and gas, uh, real nice, as you can see, holding up around the range. When it gets back down into this area here, and it will, uh, at one point it will, um, look, dial into the XOP and ETF and find the two, three best stocks and then, and then look to trade them as well. And that's what I like to do. Same thing here with the XLE. Again, this is on a bearish, um, this is a bearish rising wedge which broke down. Now, this here, below Friday's low, you can actually get short the market. You can get short the XLE, excuse me. Um, that is a con confirmation sell signal. Me, personally, I'm going to look for weakness in some good quality stocks in the XLE because oil and gas is seasonally strength, has season, excuse me, has seasonal strength um, up until May, as well as uh, some of the metals, too, as well. So just keep an eye on. So the, some of the oil and gas and the oil service providers, um, really are uh, pretty healthy uh, seasonal tendencies tend to um, they tend to rise here in the next couple of months so to me personally not that you can't short it because it is a, sell, a short signal I'm gonna look for some of the better quality names in uh, in the energy space USO as you can see here so it's just kind of holding and doing nothing wrong here at all but as you can see um, this is something that um, to me uh, I would like to look for further a little bit of a more of a pull pullback 
maybe back to the 200 or even just kind of um, fill in this gap area of support and then move higher again that's where we look to get long easy to manage if you do get if you can get that that area of price because uh, you'll be below the 200 day moving average so pretty cool if if we can get it now as you can see uh, remember we had last week we had um home building sentiment was was dismal it was the worst in i believe it was nine months or a year and look what happens we came back in this is getting accumulated the home construction industry they are buying every dip and that's what uh, you should be doing every time when the x8 when the xlb the xhb you could see here so if you have nothing really going on and you're not looking at anything, let's look at the home builders on pullbacks. Right now, it hasn't given us any, right? We had a small two-day pullback, and I like to see it really, really come back in here to this area and then start looking to accumulate on weakness. Look at Lennar. Same thing with Lennar. One of my favorites, Pulte Homes. Pulte here looks fantastic. I mean, this really is consolidating here all of um, pretty much 2014. Um, I'd love to see this thing pull back one or two more days. Uh, and then look to accumulate some of Pulte. KBH, same thing. I mean, this is just a great base building pattern here. You can see all accumulating, all this accumulating uh, uh, price action from anywhere from 15 to 19. This is, uh, and making higher highs and higher lows. You can't beat that. So anything really above this new price area of 1930, um, I think KBH starts to really take off. And then, as you know, seasonal strength in the home builders start to come in here in the spring. Um, so I, it, that could have a really m good move uh, in the next couple of months. So I'd definitely be looking to buy um, pullbacks on the home construction. XLF, you know, another story. Here's another sector which I'd like to see uh, move higher, which has not. And we're below this long-term uptrend line from 2012. Not looking too good. Some of the banks, uh, like, like Citibank, just can't get out of its own way. I mean, it is literally just so weak. Um, and it's really shocking from when it broke out here and then f just failed. Um, so it's been literally down all of 2014. It made a lower high from this previous high. So there's nothing good about this stock right now. Um, I do think that Citibank really starts to break out higher. Uh, but this is really where it needs to alleviate. $50. You need to get above 50 and base build above 50 and then break out. Until then, I'd stay away from it. Don't even touch it. JP Morgan here, much better. But making a lower high from this previous high, maybe we get another pullback into the zone, and then that's where you want to look to accumulate, and then your stops will be the below the 200-day moving average. Goldman Sachs, um, doing nothing really wrong, but uh, again, way below uh, the 50. We're below the 20. We're just barely above the 200. So I'd like to see this consolidation area break higher, 166, call it, and then look to start building a base. Um, the... the um, the banks actually did pretty good. They looked like they were, they were doing okay on Friday, and then they just rolled over along with the market as well. And look at Apple. Apple here now, and, and I had a couple emails. Hey, you know, what do you think about Apple? I, I really would not touch it. Um, let's see if it can fill this gap and then see where it goes. And they would need to build a base. As you notice that it does build bases, and then it breaks. And that's what you want in Apple. Like, look at this area here. Build a base for about a month, and then explode it and then sold off a little bit on low volume and then broke back above this little base for three days. Sold off, broke back above it, and then again sold off and then broke back above this base. So as you can see, Apple is a good uh, pattern recognition, is, is, um, is, is constant in here. So let it come in, let it build a base, and then when it breaks back above the base, that's when you would get long. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Let's see what happens. We're right now, the E-mini S&P is, is up a dollar, very quiet in the overnight session, no movement at all. So it looks like the markets are going to be looking for something um, to make this continued move higher or we start to break down. I think the path of least resistance is down. Even if the market moved up another couple of days, I do think that uh, sellers would probably come back in and look to sell this market. It's very tired. You can see it in the price action during the course of the trading day. Let the trades come to you. Let the easy trades happen. Don't force any trades. Even if you sit there for a few days, trust me, um, there's going to be plenty of opportunity. Now that we're into uh, March, which would be almost getting over the first quarter of 2014, there's going to be a lot of movement in equities. Trust me. Have a great day, guys. We'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.